if you keep failing at something after trying what feels like everything, you may be minimizing or ignoring your weaknesses and blind spots like I was in my mid-20s when I was experiencing a ton of professional success and failing over and over again in relationships. And then everything changed. If you're in that place, I'll tell you exactly how things can change for you. See, most self-help books and gurus tell you to focus on your strengths. That is very good, but also very incomplete advice. This is how it happens. Unaddressed weaknesses, they prevent us from gaining initial momentum. And even if we're lucky enough to have some early success, they sort of still slow us down and they eventually catch up with us which leads to this repeated sense of failure, frustration, loss of faith, motivation, all completely unnecessary suffering, if you ask me. So if you can't shake off that feeling, that feeling of an invisible hand just holding you down, or this weight dragging behind you as you're progressing and trying to do the very best you can in life, I wanna tell you you're not alone. And if you want to fly higher and you want to go further, watch this video. Make sure you subscribe on all the platforms. And today, today, I will unpack for you the surprising treasure trove of growth, healing, and progress you can find if you name, identify, and deal with your weaknesses correctly. My first big aha moment about dealing with weaknesses came in my mid-20s. I was a very successful artist entertaining millions of people, and that relational weakness that I told you about earlier caught up with me in a big, big way. And I learned something then that changed the very trajectory of my life. It gave me much more peace, much more healing, and way more impact and success than I could have predicted. And it was all sort of nestled, hidden, in the way I learned to deal with weaknesses. And I wanna share that with you today. I really hate being a cliche, but I was. In fact, this is classic. It's actually endemic among successful professionals and high achievers. We get good at something and we double down on it and we double down on it. And then we get this initial momentum. We get success, we get some wins, we get respect, we get praise. And eventually we just sort of buy into the persona And we forget about the person, the real human flesh and blood person. Forget being objectified. We self-objectify way more than other people objectify us. We become our wins. We become our persona. And our weaknesses are hidden out of sight by us to our detriment. And what happens next becomes incredibly, embarrassingly predictable the very thing we're trying to protect, our precious success, our respect, the money, the praise, the status, eventually suffers because we're so crazy unhappy and anxious, right? So we lose creativity, we lose flexibility, we lose motivation, clarity, endurance. Those are the things that got us here in the first place. They're now diminished and they're not providing us with forward motion. So for me, creativity, original thinking, innovation are the core of what I do, of who I am, of who I want to be. So when they take a dive, you start paying attention. And if you're in a place like this, you should pay attention too. The first step is to name your weakness, is saying, I am bad at dot, 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 you fill in the blank. Can you do that? Can you do it with raw, unfiltered, vulnerability. The counterintuitive breakthrough of that first step is that you experience, not just think of, but experience that fully acknowledging a weakness in one area doesn't make you a loser or weak in all the other areas. It makes you human. More importantly, it's a sign of courage, a sign of vision, and it will, as a habit, as a skill, set you up for a lifetime of success. So both the breakthrough science and the best-selling success of Brene Brown, for example, and her many extraordinary books like The Gifts of Imperfection or Daring Greatly is just proof of how powerful the ability to acknowledge, understand, and what to do with weakness is. 
And this is no longer just sort of self-help stuff. This is research. This is science. This is resonating with millions of people. So this is the surprisingly simple and yet powerful next step you take if you want to experience the full power of vulnerability. You tell people. You tell your inner circle, maybe your co-workers, maybe a group of friends, maybe you tell the world. But you tell people about your weaknesses and your blind spots, just like the most successful entrepreneur in the history of humanity. So his name won't pop up in the classic list of tech giants or industrial magnets because we don't think of Saul of Tarsus, also known as the Apostle Paul, as an entrepreneur. But he was a social entrepreneur, the greatest in history, and I'll tell you why. Even if you're not a Christian, you might want to consider this. He went from being the enemy of the church to becoming the most influential evangelist who wrote 48% or 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. His contribution to the Christian faith has endured for 2,000 years, and his insights into the faith are studied, followed by over 2 billion followers today. You may not be entirely convinced, but here's some food for thought. Take any public figure today and imagine them having impact in the year 4000. Now, what is the secret, the entrepreneurial secret of Paul? And I believe it's contained throughout his writings, but nothing more notable and more specific and precise as this letter that he wrote to a community, a faith community in Corinth. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul is considering his weakness also to be the source of strength because it allowed for God's power to shine even brighter. We may dismiss this, but this would be a mistake because if we see the consistency, timeless wisdom over here, modern breakthrough science pointing to the same thing, weakness handled with vulnerability can be a superpower, advantage in life. There's something really important for us to learn. So what is the next step after you feel comfortable speaking about your weaknesses with either your family, your inner circle, your work circle, or even the wide world, right? You ask for help. This is a game changer. I cannot overstate this. You ask for help from the right people, obviously, but two things happen if you actually ask for help. Qualified people can see not only your weaknesses, but your blind spots. Blind spots are weaknesses ignored for a long time until you don't even see what they are. How can you improve something you don't know you have to improve? The second thing that happens when you ask for help is accelerated growth. I asked for help. I followed instructions religiously. It took some mentorship. It took some coaching. It took some time. But I've been now married for 24 years. I'm in love with my wife, Deb. We're business partners, best friends. We do everything together. And to give you some context, maybe it's not a big deal for you. It's a huge deal for me. I come from three generations of broken homes. For me to make this kind of progress... I can attribute it to only one thing, guidance and coaching. It accelerates your growth. Ask for help, listen, implement. I'm giving you this storyline just as one illustration. I try to have a posture of, of vulnerability, of strength and weakness everywhere. In my family, with my wife as a husband, as a parent to my kids, as an employer to my staff, as a partner to my business partners. And I have pride and I have ego. And I fail at this all the time, but I get back on track. And what you can expect if you adopt that as a superpower is the following. These are some of the advantages of acknowledging, naming, dealing with your weaknesses on an everyday basis. Number one, you get nothing but empathy, support, and encouragement from the people you love. Number two, clarity. You become so clear once you realize that your weaknesses can be healed and you can grow, that they're vital for you to collaborate they're there to even remind you that you need other people. And when other people know about what you need, they really want to serve you. You get so much clarity out of that. Number three, your weaknesses voiced and worked on become a source of strengthening. You strengthen your family, you strengthen your business, you strengthen your community, you strengthen your organization. People rally around those things. And now they have a common cause. They know each other's weaknesses. They know each other's strengths. And you're building something beautiful together. Number four, learning new skills and new abilities, new sensitivities even, become a natural extension of you acknowledging and naming your weaknesses because now you're curious. Now you want to improve. Now you want to grow. And finally, number five, when you actually experience weakness as a source of strength across the board, you relax. You heal. 
you see more broadly and you start flourishing, truly flourishing as a human being, and you start adopting that as a lifestyle. I have a fun, practical illustration of this after the bumper if you stick around. But first, I have a gift for you. So if you found what I'm talking about valuable, you will probably love a free masterclass that explores more dimensions of this. Uh, the way to get access to it is to go to exponential.life and then find access to the masterclass and you can watch it for free. Again, thank you so much for being part of Headspace. Please subscribe. Please help us spread the word and grow the channel. Thank you again. So here's a practical strength and weakness example for you. I'm an introvert, I live in my head, and I'm also very ADD, which means a thought can be sort of hijacked by something else. So when I'm talking to someone, like I'm talking to you right now, and you're saying things to me, and I can be just nodding and saying even yes and doing this, but I have no idea what you're saying to me. So if you ask me again, I have no recollection of what you told me, which is super embarrassing. And what I do is I just freely share that with people. People actually widely know this. And what I get in return is a lot of grace. And as a bonus, you can actually get to make fun of me. That's just one example of the many, many ways we can live our weaknesses as strengths.